In the last part of this compositing tutorial, I want to be able to tweak each of these characters separately, including the environment. So first I have to set up my layers properly, in the 3D view. I moved all the lamps to the first layer, Merlin to the second one, Tivolino on the third one, and environment on the fifth one. I don't know why I skipped the fourth, but... <laughs> So, now let's move to a new panel we're going to see, which is the render layers one, on the zine buttons. So you can see there is a bunch of buttons there. The first row is just a copy from the ones on the header in the 3D view, just as for reference. Then below that you get a few options for this render layer, to pick from a bunch of, of them or add a new. You can rename it. You can render only this render layer by setting single on. And you can delete the current one. Below you see again a bunch of buttons that may look a little bit similar to the layers one. But this time they do something different. They tell Blender which layers from the 3D view are going to be part of this render layer. So since I want Merlin to be separately from the rest, I, made, I named this render layer as Merlin, and I set it up to be uh, only the first layer and the second one. The first one is the one with lamps, and the second one has the geometry from Merlin. And as you can see, when I render, there is nothing else than uh, Merlin. Which is good, but we need the rest, so let's add Tibolino, which is the third layer, and the first one for the lamps. That's something good about having the lamps on a separate layer, because you can share it among all the uh, environment and the characters and everything. And the environment was on the fifth layer, and the first one. So now that I have the three of them, I can render again. So Blender takes into account all these changes. So you can see Blender is rendering all the render layers, but it's only showing the environment one, because it, this one is the active on the render layers panel, but it's still rendering the rest. You can see that it, it also shows the shadows from the other layers, actually. But now only Merlin is there. Weird. No, that's because Merlin was the default render layer, the one we changed before. So it's uh, the only one that is connected to the chain of nodes we have there. So we just duplicate this one, change it for Tivolino, and the same again, change it for environment. Now we need to somehow join these two render layers, so I'm going to select both and mix them by using from color Z combine node. I need this Z combine because I need to also have the the Z value, the depth value of them. For the for the the focus, sorry. So now I do the same with the environment. Just connect the Z value and the image value there. Now you can see that it looks exactly the same as before, but now we have everything separately. So we replace the Z value from Merlin with the result from our Z combine. And oops, the image is missing, I think. Yep, I, I was still using only Merlin once. So I just replaced. Yep, much better. Well, not that much, actually. You can see a pretty rough border 
the edge of our render layers are is really strong. That's because, as we said, the Z value, the depth value, is not anti-alias by default. So we need to solve that by clicking on say buffers on the output panel and then full sample. Now the old OSA button will now be FSA, which means full screen anti-alias. As you can see now when you render you don't see any anti-aliasing. But this oversampling happens at the end of the of the render which is better because that way blender can calculate all this this uh, oversampling over the all the passes and put them all together at the end that make it, uh, makes it look a lot better than the normal osa which is rendered during the render and uh, then somehow composite but this way it happens after the render so that way you get really nice anti-alias which is really good I tend to use it almost whenever I can but still it's a, it's a bit slower than the normal method so you have to be sure you have enough time to render so as you can see I'm just changing the colors on one of the render layers and the rest of them are just the same. So let's try to do the same with the with the shark here, Tivolino, a little bit bluish. Same for the environment. As you can see, I'm always, well, whenever I change a value, Blender tries to recalculate everything, all the nodes that are connected from this node. But since these nodes are on the start of the chain, like uh, at the beginning, Blender will try to recalculate everything every time. So what I always do is I have a uh, one hand always over the escape button. So Blender will stop calculating whenever I press it. So whenever I change uh, any value, I just hold escape and Blender stops calculating that. So I can, if I know how it's going to look or I want to change only one value in many nodes, I just uh, press escape immediately after releasing the, the click, which is something really, it really makes uh, the workflow a lot, a lot faster. You don't have to wait for it to calculate every time. So we got three outputs out of uh, each of these render layers, like image, alpha, and Z, but we can have many more. These are passes. And the passes can be controlled from the render layers panel. At the bottom, you can see we already got the combined and the Z pass enabled. This, the VEC pass is going to control the speed value for our vector blur. The NOR gives us the normal, which I left enabled because I want to use it. Then we can also deliver a, pass, a UV pass, a mist pass, index object pass, color, diffused, bright, specular, shadows, and an occlusion, which I'm going to, to leave enabled there. Reflection, Refraction, and Radiosity. All these passes actually are part of the combined pass. We can take away, for example, the AO. I just control click on it. And that way the AO is not going to be rendered on the final render, but it's going to be available as a separate render pass which is really cool because it will not be on the final image on the render when you render you won't, you won't see it but you can control separately this pass and uh, on compositing so you can tweak it afterwards after the render is done so as you can see here Merlin doesn't have any 
Well, now when it composites with the rest, we, you can see the difference a lot more clear. There, you can see that Merlin doesn't have any amino occlusion on it, while the environment actually has, as well as uh, Tivolino. They all got this nice amino occlusion, the contact shadow, but now not uh, Merlin. Because for Merlin, we're going to tweak it separately. If we connect the output of the AO into our viewer, you can see that only shows the ambient occlusion, no the color, nor the the brights, the specular, the shadows, not just the uh, ambient occlusion. So if we want to see this, uh, how it will look on the render, we just mix these two passes using a multiply node. But as you can see, the AO pass has a black background. So when I try to mix my original image with this AO pass, all the backgrounds get dark. And uh, we don't want that actually. So let's try to get this background all white by using a color ramp connected to the alpha which shows only white whatever is alpha and black whatever is not we just inverse this we just move the the sliders to the other way there and now we just mix using add the ambient occlusion and the white background. So now we got a pure white ambient occlusion and only dark whatever is in the in the shadow or occluded. So now if we multiply this or the image, you can see that now our ambient occlusion works like it should, only change it whatever is in, in the character, not the, the environment of it, not the surroundings of this image. So now we can do tricky things like even changing the color of this of this pass or the contrast of it. More strong, less strong even colored. For example, if our character is on the outside, it's like an exterior image, it will probably get a little bit bluish for because of the sky. So with this technique we could tint our amino occlusion pass blue and then put it on top of our original image, our pass. And that will get a little bit of ambient occlusion with color in our character. And the good thing is that you can tweak this for every render layer separately. So well I did it a little bit extreme, like it's like to write and uh, red, which doesn't make any sense if it's undersea. But it, it shows the, the effect at least. Like there. Weird. So now it's just a matter of replacing this on the chain of uh, of nodes we already have, and now at the end you can see that our that Merlin only has a red amino occlusion. Creepy. While the rest have a black amino occlusion, black shadows on the on the occlusion.
So if we want to copy this to the other characters, we will just select everything. We could duplicate everything manually, but it's easier if we can group this. And we can actually, we select all these nodes, Control G, or from the menu, node, make group, and then we make a group. Which is just a bunch of nodes inside a one big node with all the inputs and outputs from the all the nodes, even those that are not used, so it can get a little bit messy, even more messy. So I just disable by clicking on the plus icon on the top of uh, on the header of each node, and now you can see it hides all the inputs and outputs we don't use. We could duplicate this and put it on the other on the other layers. By default it's linked, so you can see a little two. That's the num amount of users this group has. So if you change the value in one group, it will change to all, all the other ones as well. For now, let's just ungroup. And now, a pass I left behind is the normal, which is a really cool one. We know the normal is the direction of the of the faces towards the well, actually, we are not going to see now that by default they are all pointing towards the camera. We have a special node for this, which is the inside vector type, then it's called normal. And if we connect the dot output to the image input from the viewer, you can see that they all, the white is pointing to, to the camera. But if we click and drag on inside, inside this normal node, we can do really crazy things, like change the direction of the normals, and we could use this pretty cool effect as, for example, a sliding, because uh, no matter how my object, if it's animated, if it rotates, the, the normals will always point to the same side, so, for example, the, the light will always come from one side, like there. But what happens if you add a color? Then you get this weird thing happening. So it's always good to transform this, convert the colors from the normal node, put it through a, a color ramp node so you can avoid these kind of things. There, and now you avoid all that weird color thing. And you can also tweak the intensity of this, of this light, so to speak. <laughs> so now if we connect this to the rest of the chain, We could see at the end the final effect. We could make it even more obvious. There, and you can see now how it gets a lot more volume feeling to this character now because it got this lighting coming all from this side. And it's all in post processing. I, I didn't got even to, to re render or so, which is awesome. I'm going to enable the normal on the Tivolino as well, so I can repeat the process and give him some light as well. Not everything for, Mer for Merlin. As you can see, Merlin got all the fancy stuff like 
color damping occlusion and uh, the light from the normals while Tivolino, poor Tivolino got nothing so let's give some light to it for now I'm just going to duplicate this, all these three nodes just select them all, shift T jeez I'm really making a huge mess here I'll try to keep your uh, all your nodes uh, collapsed by pressing H that will make it really really small like the ones I have there it's not height actually it's just they're just collapsed they will still work So just replaced the original image from Tivolino. Now he got light. Maybe too much. We can just take a little bit more of that. There. there now we really got a messy compositing going on here but they all got light they all got uh, uh, everything almost but as you can see here we lost all the nice anti aliasing thing we could take it back not by rendering by hitting shift R for read saved full sample layers and now Blender will not re-render again, we'll just do the composite the thing that happens at the end it will only happen uh, as many times as as many OSA samples you have or FSA in this case as you can see it only does the compositing and now you get you got the uh, um, anti-aliasing back so I hope it's uh, useful for you and it helps some way so, bye.